to Real Estate Raw. I am. Thank you for joining our normal Wednesday session. Uh, today, you're going to be covering a topic that is actually out of my book, Real Estate Raw. Uh, forget which chapter, page uh, 79, the five minute pro forma. This is how to underwrite a deal uh, that has no financials, what we call mom and pop deals. So, this actually covers a lot of different um, subjects, uh, uh, you know, from being able to make a pro forma quickly to being able to underwrite a deal that has no financials, to understanding how a bank is going to underwrite the deal. Uh, all of those uh, topics we're gonna kind of cover today. And again, full detail in book, uh, Real Estate Raw. So uh, talking about how to underwrite a deal with no financials. All right, you don't really underwrite a small deal that has no financials. Uh, that would be a pro forma. We're gonna have to create that. So on today's topic, we're gonna kind of talk about how do we underwrite a deal uh, with no financials, we don't, as I said, and then how does that affect the bank? How do we create a bank loan? So those are sort of the main topics that we're going to hit today. So uh, underwriting a deal that has no financials. Step number one, why are there no financials? That would be the first thing you want to know, uh, and, and it's a good thing to ask uh, the realtor or the seller. So second question would be, hey, are we dealing with a realtor or a seller here? If you are dealing with a realtor and there are no financials, you reach out to the realtor and they say something like, oh, it's mom and pop and they just didn't keep good records, there are no financials. Well, that would tell me right there I'm not dealing with a very good realtor because uh, a good commercial realtor would know to go over there and do exactly what we're going to do on the call today, which is underwrite that deal, get some numbers together, feed them back to the seller and then have the seller actually have a T12. So a good realtor will help a seller construct a T12 from their data. And that's what we're gonna do. So number one, it's not underwriting. Uh, we're gonna have to kind of do some performer work. Why is there no T12? You know what, I've, or no uh, financial information, trailing 12, I keep saying that, T12, trailing 12, if, uh, if you're not familiar with that term, that's a month to month profit and loss. It's what we're using to, to use uh, the income approach to analyze a deal. All right, so there's no financials. What I have found is when you're, mm, 20 units and under sometimes a lot of sellers will treat these properties kind of like a used car right uh the rent comes in they just collect it cash whatever fling in the bank account uh swipe the credit card when something breaks they just fix it they're not really keeping records and it's all commingled into their own personal information that is not that uncommon uh all right it is a problem twofold one as i said you're not going to know uh how the property runs two you're going to have trouble with your lender walk into a lender's office and say hey i would like a loan on a piece of property that has no financials and I know nothing about, that's probably not gonna get you a, a great loan. So what you gotta do first is kind of can reconstruct what's going on. Okay, let me give you the formula for real estate first. Actually, what you wanna do is you wanna follow the general formula. I will post it here. You want to follow uh, the income minus expenses equals NOI formula. So this is what we're doing right here before I, before I go ahead and start talking about how to create this. This is the formula you're following. It's basic cash on cash formula. You're going to say what is the income of the property minus the expenses equals the net operating income. All right. Our net operating income is what we have in which to pay the lender. So this is, you can see it here, income minus expenses equals NOI, NOI minus debt service equals cash flow. All right. Now, cash flow divided by our acquisition cost, down payment, all that, equals cash on cash. So this is what we're trying to do right here in this formula when we say analyze a deal and we don't have any information here. We don't have the income. We don't have the expenses. That's what I'm talking about, that formula. So we're going to have to reconstruct that. Step number one, income. Pretty easy. Uh, what I would tell you there is to go out and find the average market income for that property or average rent. Uh, I have another formula here I'll share with you. Uh, this is what I call my quick calculator formula, and this is what I'm going to kind of describe to you right now. Uh, so what you want to do is you want to go online and figure out what's the average rent in the area. Uh, there's lots of websites, lots of places you can do that. You know, there's Zillow, uh, Rent-A-Meter, uh, you know, lots and lots of different places you can find the average rent. You can be a secret renter. You can go on apartments.com, forrent.com, places like that, and look up what is the average rent in the area. All right, so what you're going to do then is take, and here is the formula. There you are. You're going to take the average annual income or, or um, rent for the apartment, the average monthly rent, times 12, right? That's going to give us our annual income. Divide by 2. That's a 50% expense ratio. That's going to give us roughly a net operating income. All right, I'll repeat that. 
So what I'm saying, do a little homework, go online, figure out what's the average rent in the area. How many units do we have? Let's just say there's 20 units, okay? 20 units times 1,000, you know, whatever the rent is in the area. 20 times 1,000 times 12, annual income. There you go. Cut that in half, divide by two. That is an expense ratio of 50%. It's a ballpark. It's an estimate, right? A lot of apartment complexes, when you get a little higher uh, in, in size, will run into about a 50% expense ratio. I'll give you a full breakdown uh, in the book. Uh, 10 to 30 units, you're looking usually around a 20 to 30% expense ratio. Uh, 35 units or so, you're going to be around 30 to 40. 50 to 75 units, uh, you're probably going to be in your 40 to 50% expense ratio. Once you hit about eh, 75 units and larger, you're almost always at a 50, 55% expense ratio. What I mean by that is, is percent of total revenue, right? So that's what I'm saying here. You got to go uh, figure out what is your estimated total revenue going to be. Annual or uh, market rent times unit times 12, right? Cut it in half, roughly. There you go. Bada bing, there's your net operating income. All right, now what you have to do is to take the cap rate in the market. Okay, let's pause there. Cap rate, what cap rate? Cap rate you want to pay for the property. We're going into a buyer's market, not a seller's market anymore. The market is coming to us, not the sellers. We are not asking what the cap rate is the seller wants. We're not asking what the cap rate the, the realtor thinks. We don't care. We're only worried about the cap rate we want to pay that makes that property worth what we want to pay. The seller's going to accept it or they're not. You know, make the offer. Don't worry about it past that, right? It's going to be our time going forward. So cap rate, cap rate you want to pay. So you're going to kind of need to figure out what is the cap rate in the area per type of property that you would be interested in. For me, I don't really like cap rates below about six, not unless it's a really nice A-class property. So if I'm just going to kind of go around the room and you know swing a cap rate around, it's probably going to be around six. So what I'm saying here is get that annual income, figure out your NOI pretty quickly, then uh, apply the cap rate. There is your value. There's roughly what that property is worth. Okay. Now you can take that to the seller and you can say, all right, listen, I'm, I'm in this price. So what I would do here, pro tip, what I do here is when I come up with a price, I never give the seller the exact number. Uh, if uh, let's say that I, I come up with a million dollar purchase price from my back of the napkin formula here, I would go to the seller and say, listen, it looks like I'm, I'm buying real estate in your, your area in this price range from about you know, 900,000 to maybe 1.1, 1.2 million. Does that sound like something you're interested in, right? See what I'm doing? I've come up with a number, the million. I'm not giving that seller a hard number. I don't want to commit to that. I'm giving them a range. And then I'm going to go deeper into the deal if they're biting on that range. If they come back and say, oh no, you know, there's no way we would sell for less than $2 million, $3 million or something like that. And my back of the napkin formula told me a million, we're not even having that conversation. We're not even close, right? So I don't have to go any further. I don't have to go do any more research than that, any more market research, any of that garbage. Seller's crazy. I'm not interested. So this is how you can start to quickly figure out the value of a property. Just follow that formula right there. You're going to go out. You're going to figure the annual income. You're going to apply the expense ratio. All right. So that's, that's giving you an idea of what the property should run for. If you want to go to the next level, now you're going to have to start breaking things down individually. What you're going to want to do is create a budget and then get with some management companies in the area. I would not recommend that you do this until you're a lot more serious about a deal. Like perhaps you're ready to get an LOI accepted or even in due diligence. Now you're going to sit out and line by line create a budget. And I would take that to a management company and say, hey, listen, you know, does this seem in, in line, something like you can manage? Um, you know, it's taxes and insurance. Those are going to be your two big, big, big variables right now. Uh, everything else kind of is, is pretty standard across the country. I can tell you from experience that you're probably running most eh, 10 to 30 unit, 40 unit properties at around 4,000 to about 6,000 a door operating expense, give or take. Uh, my rule of thumb is about 45, 5,000, 4,500 bucks a door OPEX uh, for most properties like that. So I'm kind of looking in that range, uh, you know, and, and the big thing that kicks that out right now, taxes and insurance. If you're in Texas, if you're in Florida where I'm at, insurance has really uh, been bad. If anybody wants to have that comment, certainly post over there. We can all cry on each other's shoulder about the cost of insurance at the moment. Not much we can do about that. But 
That is a big one these days. Anyway, I'll get off of that. But um, that's the two that are throwing the number off. But again, 50, 55% expense ratio. It's a little heavy for a 20 or 30 unit uh, size property. You don't usually have expenses that high, but it's a very safe number if you want to use that. Once you've got this data, you've gone over to the property management, you've got it a little more line by line. This is something that you can now do, such as say the realtor would do. Feed this data back to the seller and say, here, here's your T12. Have them then certify it and give it to you. Now you have a T12 you can take to the bank. So it's, it's uh, not only about understanding how to value the property from your end, it's also about how to work with that seller, getting them to reconstruct their data so that they can feed it back to you so that you can give it to the bank and you know not uh not do anything weird right so that's that's kind of what you got to do to get those deals going like that uh again quick cap rate if you don't want to use the cap rate what you can do is fall back to cash flow right um in a lot of cases a small property 10 20 units who really cares about the cap rate it's about cash on cash it's about uh, am i making enough money for this to be worth the brain damage i mean really that's the, that's the answer you know 10 20 units you might get a 10 percent cash on cash and it turns out to be a whole 23 dollars and 42 cents a month you know, how do I know? Right. But point being is that's not enough money to be worth messing with. So when you're talking about smaller properties, don't always live and die by a cap rate or a percent. Make sure it's actually enough money to be worth messing with. The only other thing I would tell you about that is also consider resume. This is a tip I give a lot of my students. Um, you know, as I'm working with individual people, I say, listen, you know, don't go small doing small deals unless it really moves your resume. Uh, unless you're getting a lot of equity where it really kind of puts you on the map. If you're new, if you're getting started and there's a lot of uh, education value, then certainly do it, um, right? Don't worry so much about that cash on cash. But if you're already established, you're already kind of in the business, you really want to be buying those things right because you want to you want to be getting good cash and cash. The management can eat up a lot of the cash flow in smaller deals. But that's basically it right there. Um, go out, figure out the, the income. It's just roughly looking at the market. What's the average rent? Multiplying by number of doors, getting an annual income. I usually divide that by two. There's my net operating income. Slap a cap rate on that thing. Boom, there's your value. That is how you quickly underwrite a deal that does not have uh, financials. By the way, it is also the exact same way that you want to talk to a seller if you're ever doing any sort of direct marketing campaign. I used to do these all the time. I haven't lately, but I used to send out a lot of letters, things like that. What if the phone rings? The seller's on the other side and they say, hey, Bill, you called me up about that property. Uh, you, you know, uh, yes, I would like to sell it. How much do you want to pay? What do we say when somebody calls us up like that? I don't know. Give me your financials. Yeah, I found that doesn't work real well. When all of a sudden you're talking to a stranger, the next thing out of your mouth is give me all the financials. That doesn't go so well. So the, the what I learned to do is exactly what I told you today and exactly what I've got in the book over here is how to do that quick back of the napkin formula so that when you're on the phone quickly with someone, all you have to say is to that seller, hey, well, listen, you know, uh, I'm, I'm out of my office, but real quick, how many units do you have? 30. Great. Hold on. 30. What's, by the way, what's the average rent? 30 times rent times 12 divided by 2. I already know I'm going to use the six cap rate. Divide by cap rate. Boom. Well, ma'am, it looks like I'm paying somewhere between, you know, 900000 a million, one a door. Does that sound like something you're interested in? Yes. Oh, okay. Well, great. Listen, you know, for me to make a solid offer, what I'm going to really have to have is your financials. And there's how you can kind of segue into a better conversation uh, about getting someone's financials, especially if they surprise you with a call uh, or all of a sudden you just meet somebody in a room and they have some property for sale. You can always kind of whip out a general offer. This is not a low I, this is not trying to go to contract. It's just how you get a really good uh, valuation on a property. So uh, if anybody has any other questions, please post them in here. If you want to hear about any topic in the future, let us know. Uh, I join us on the regular website, realestateraw.com. I have free videos and things on there. I do offer coaching. I'm not going to turn this into a big sales pitch, but uh, my services are available. So if anybody needs any help with deals, deal analysis, just getting your business started, certainly uh, look Monica and I up. We can, we can definitely help you out with that. Um, thanks everybody for stopping by and uh, share the channel, bring some friends. We'll see you next week.